Just with, like, Mountain Dew. They have exclusive Mountain Dews. Dude, I love I love going to Taco Bell and getting a Baja Blast. But <laughs> that... For, so, somehow the way you phrased that made it sound like... A, really unsettling. <laughs> it, it just it made me very uncomfortable right from the jump. Did not Goes like to that. a gas station and just shit talk somebody until they sock them. I felt more white than I ever have in my life the other night. I, I don't know why pronouncing it Baja... How did you pronounce it? I was, I was ba- a, yeah. Baja Blast. The Baja Blast. It sounds like innuendo when you say it like that. I don't know why. I think because Baja <laughs> is like how you would say blowjob after you've had a stroke. <laughs> like pronounce BJ is Baja. Baja. <laughs> my Baja. Ooh. Wow, that's dark already. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, I felt. Oh, go ahead. Oh, are we ready to go? Let's do it. Not until you finished your anecdote. Okay. Well, I felt really white the other night because I was at a show. It was uh, this band from Columbia. And I was there with um, some of my Latino friends as well. And there was this girl there who met up with our group and she was introducing herself to everybody and me and my friend Eric who are both white she's like oh yeah hi I'm Alex and then we're like cool nice to meet you uh and then she turned to our our friends Mario and Luisa and she's just like uh hi I'm Alejandra (laughs) and it was just like (laughs) I guess she just didn't she didn't trust us to be able to say it or yeah. understand it intelligibly or something. It's someone like, that okay. lives, yeah, it's man, been to Indiana. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't blame <laughs> her at all, but I'm just like, dang. She was like, let me pronounce my name for you so we don't have to hear no, you he, try. No, worse, here's the no, Americanized like, you know, for nickname. You, for you, it's Alex. Yeah, she stereotyped you. Okay. Oh, yeah, didn't I've even trust stereotyped. you to hear her name. Correct. I, yeah, I I would like to report a hate crime. Yeah. Okay. All right. Like, no. Yeah. Persecuted white men really do have it I'm, rough in this country. I'm the real victim here. All um, right, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to New Kamak. In the last session, a second location of famine's starvation ritual was found at the Prospector Camp, drawing ever closer the threat of a larger web of rituals being completed and the entire city, and perhaps even the world, becoming uninhabitable for vampires. While investigating this, our heroes were spotted by the group of prospectors, minus their foreman Jasper, who had been excommunicated due to Gustin's malicious magical mischief. Specifically, those prospectors saw Darby lunge threateningly at one of them, and they saw Archibald sailing through the air at a baffling height of 40 feet for no reason that they could could tell. He was just up there for a second. It's very confusing for everyone involved. But most disturbingly, (laughs) in their attempts to chase our protagonists down, they stumbled upon Famine's ritual remnants and presumed, out loud, that Archibald and his cohorts were to blame. Archibald addressed this problem by paying one of the Tremere clan's resident revenants seven dollars to go to the prospector camp, become a prospector, and convince them that Archibald never existed, a quest that the short (laughs) fellow was more than happy to immediately shuffle off into the night to complete, but not before Augustine strapped a body cam to him. While at the Chantry, using the powers of geometry, Regent Leslie Lane estimated that the other locations <laughs> of the casting of Famine's starvation ritual will be, or have already been, the local recycling center, the city's airport, and Camp Moonlight. With those three, and with Shedtown, and with the Prospector Camp, that makes all five hypothetical points of a pentagram which would blanket the city and presumably if this ritual is completed our protagonist will no longer be able to feed in the city that they are trapped in for the next year and will surely die maybe 
Leslie agreed to place the short revenant in Augustine's care so that the bizarre dwarf could assist him in investigating these other locations, not knowing that Archibald had already sent the strange servant off on an unrelated quest. Also, Darby started work on making a drivable car out of a child's Batmobile bed. It the is the most pressing oh. uh, issue at the moment. Hey, it might priorities. It might be handy in a pinch. Don't you guys already have like four cars? But this is going to be yeah. But none of them are a Batmobile or a bed. True. (laughs) Uh, It is currently. I was sleeping in one of the cars. What are you talking about? (laughs) This is true. It literally was a bed. (laughs) (laughs) It is one a.m. on Saturday. Sunrise is in about six hours tomorrow night. The bed store is expecting Augustine to arrive and purchase all of the beds, which he, for some reason, said he was going to do. Also, (laughs) tomorrow night, Archibald invited Famine, via letter in the mail, to a 9 p.m. chess date at Club Wonderland, which Father Francisco Palladian agreed to send one of his hunters to in case there's an opportunity to nab her. Uh, Also... Archibald invited engineer Abraham Branson to a best friend audition date two hours later at Club Wonderland at 11 p.m. And Abraham said he'll be inviting his Nuker Tech co-workers to tag along as well. Uh, You guys are at the Tremere Chantry and uh, the Short Revenants. I think you guys are outside of the Chantry, just watching the Short Revenant like shuffle off into the night in the direction of the Prospector Camp to take care of that. <laughs> Augustine is mumbling uh, resentfully under his breath, just incoherently hateful shit about the Chantry. Just fucking God damn it! I fucking fuck. Darby is just quietly planning elements of his car bed, like not even really engaged with what's happening with the horsemen. It's really all car bed. I'm looking at a picture of Gary Kasparov dreamily. (laughs) Okay, so uh, just to confirm, uh, don't read anything into this, but you guys do just let the Revenant run off and disappear, correct? My last note from the previous session was um, <clears throat> about the Revenant. He seems to know where he's going. <laughs> you do get the impression that the dude, all the Revenants are uh, genetically quirky like, and very, very strange. But they have been servants to the Tremere Chantry for uh, an unknown amount of time. And, and they seem uh, pretty confident. Yeah, you get they the haven't let us astray yet. Yeah, they they f- absolutely follow through with anything they promise to do, including silly things that they're told to do, like make a bat signal, which True. they, they did, did overnight. Uh, so you're giving the impression right. that yeah, he'll he'll do the thing that he said he would do, literally. And we w- we'd originally planned to go to one of the five locations ourselves. Is that correct? We've been to like two. Now we've got the other three. Yeah, we, we know we know Camp Moonlight is already affected by this thing, right? Isn't that what what set off all that drama? Yeah. Wait, no. What was it? Were they There's unable a, to feed though? Creature. There's the the swamp guy, but we don't know that it. They did the circle there quite yet. Yeah, we we didn't find the circle, but if like we're saying. That's why what happened happened. Then we can. I feel like other other three places. Burn. That's not the best choice. None of you have tried to feed at Camp Moonlight. True. In case that makes a difference. That's true. Um, Do we have any other business to attend to there with like Feather or anyone? Um, Augustine promised to help them grow their crops. Do they crops. need help with their crops? They say they do. So, comrades, do we want to stick together or split up? Really, I like as the local like leftist theory guy, I was really sold on comrades, but the more Augustine says it, the less the less I'm kind of into it now. I feel like it's kind of been 
taken from me in a way. Brothers! Um, that was <laughs> bre- brethren. Yeah, there it is. Oh, God. So, uh, the the I, name I, that, that vampires use to describe other vampires is kindred, which is kind of, you know, it's got some some fellowship, socialism. Kindles. What Close do enough. we like? The airport or recycling? Oh. I'm a big recycling fan myself. Don't Darby we have a plane spits. at the airport? Wait. <laughs> at recycling? Excavo, yeah. don't you have like a, a remote control plane at the airport and like some cameras and stuff? Would you be able to check any of that out? I don't believe there's a... I mean, there's the stank wing, which is mm-hmm. a, an unknown flying thing that Excavo has access to, but that would need to be flown in from uh, somewhere in the southwest, I think New Mexico. I guess I check out Stank Wing. It opens up a webpage that looks at first like Google Maps with a marker placed in New Mexico. Oh, so it's not here. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty far away. I don't have an airplane, though. But wait a minute. You I do... don't know about Mr. Moneybags, but... You do have a network of cameras, don't you? Can't you just... Do you have cameras at any of these places? You could... Yeah. Why don't you take yeah, a look I at can... that see if you see anything? Are we at Darby Manor right now, or are we still at the Yeah, where are we? Can you see we're at the the Tremere Shantries? Weird little guys walking around, creepy wizards? Are you even paying attention right now? Damn. That That is correct. Should we go home and then make this game plan? I mean, she could be be checking her shit in the car, but yeah, let's go. Oh, yeah, Yeah. she can access it from Mm -hmm. anywhere, right? Apparently, I can access it from my phone. Is that right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, and as you were driving back to uh, Darby Manor, I actually, I I do have information about the, the airport camera feed. There are a bunch of cameras uh, at the airport that the, the Nosferatu that used to live in the city, uh, like, gained, either placed, or it looks more like they're official cameras that the Nosferatu just gained access to. Um... It looks like there's a set of uh, four cameras mounted somewhere high, like on top of an air traffic control tower, uh, pointing in the directions of north, south, east, and west. You just basically see, like, the night sky, nothing really interesting. Um, oh, uh, to uh, to the north, you see the darkness of the rural outskirts of New Kamak, occasionally interrupted by a car traveling down a county road in the distance. To the south, you see the lights of the city and can faintly make out the Nuker Technologies sign about a mile away. Uh, to the east, you see the lights of the city and can recognize the bright red Club Wonderland sign far in the distance. To the west, you see the darkness of the rural outskirts of Newcomac, occasionally interrupted by a car traveling down County Road in the distance. Same thing as north. Um, also, there is a runway camera. And you see the lights from a small private jet taking off at the end of the runway in the distance. You can also make out a person wearing a helmet with a large visor exiting a small bar next to the airport and stumbling toward a helipad where he climbs into a parked helicopter. Uh, These cameras don't have microphones, do they? When he yelled. (laughs) Like, stop doing that! (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, no. You just have to watch... Uh, nothing too suspicious, I guess. <laughs> Prior to our departure from the Chantry, uh, while I'm mumbling, I subtly walk by the porch in my mumbling and pacing and, uh, shake some, shake my pant leg, uh, quietly depositing some seeds next to the porch. In the dirt. As you okay, do. Meta gaming. Do you even know what seeds are coming out of your pant leg? Um, <laughs> or is it just a mixed bag? This is just what he does. It's just bird seed. <laughs> I'm making. <laughs> I'm He's trying to make sure to deposit some of my uh, some nightshade seeds, but otherwise, no. Nah, it is kind of a mixed bag. It's just like jelly bellies. <laughs> okay, campers. What do you say we head up to one of the three places? I'm just gonna be trying out new, new ones all all night. Oh, different ways to address the group. Uh... Yeah, this time I went with campers, but since we're not probably going to camp moonlight, that doesn't seem like the best one. It's never a good idea to split the party, 
but what if we split up, went to each one of the places, tried to feed, and see if it works, rather than searching for the things? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we do have a lot of cars, and we got access to the MKT, so I, we could probably do that pretty quick. Exactly. Would, I mean, I'm full health, right? Would I even notice a difference if I were to feed at full health? I mean, you could burn burn blood very yeah. quickly. It would be something. bland. Yeah, you just wouldn't taste right. So I would still be able to, like, tell. Yes. Is this diet blood? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You do have phone numbers of other vampires in the city that you could ask to do some of this for you. Under the authority of the prince. Mm Hmm. Prince or second in command to me? Somebody delegate. Darby keeps stepping closer to the bed project. (laughs) Even though I am the prince, because of a personal flaw, I am not allowed to command you anymore. What should we do, guys? (laughs) I think you should use your title to get other people to do our bidding. I actually canceled, I canceled my title subscription. I have to point something I out. Use, I use Apple Music now. No. I have to, I have to point out something. Um, it, uh, it doesn't go unnoticed by Excavo that um, the, the prince's command over the group, uh, Excavo um, definitely notices that Archibald's uh, authoritative command over the group seems to be slipping, which... Uh, Seems almost like a power vacuum and Excava's brain is kind of trained to notice power vacuums and uh, instinctively take advantage of them. So it's something that occurs to Excava. Yeah. Yeah. My megalomania is like, huh. (laughs) Okay. Um, I have entered the numbers of, uh, you know, I've created a group text with all the vampires we know, and I write, you up? <laughs> you you have the uh, the numbers of uh, Barry Bilson and Leslie Lane. Do I, we not have um, La- Lamprey, Jeffrey Lamprey's uh, Jeffrey number? Never got his number, no. You could ask oh, around dang. for it. And what about, what about Jade? She's a vampire now. Uh, you do have her number, yeah. I include Shade on it, too. Because she is a vampire. Hi, everybody. This is a Prince text. Uh, not the artist <laughs> formerly known as... I'm talking about myself. Um, if everyone could please try to feed in these three areas... And just let us know what you find. That would be chill. What? No, t- tell them to do it right now. Damn. <laughs> do, and then I send a follow up text. Do it right now. And then I have dropped the pins on Google Maps to them of all of them. After asking Excavo how you do that, I just give me that. Boop boop boop. You get a pretty immediate reply from Barry, who uh, says that he actually lives pretty near uh, Camp Moonlight and would be happy to go there and take care of that location for you. But you don't hear anything back from Leslie or Jade. Not surprising. Uh, Okay, so we have two on our list. What do we think? Um, uh trying to think of more ways to address you guys Does anybody have any ideas Dang, okay scout okay scouts yins what do we like recycling or Yenins. planes let's go planes darby's like planes let's are the cars planes. of the sky yeah it's easier because it's less suspicious that we are there let's go buy all of the planes <laughs> Okay, and we're off. All right. Uh, you white. rocket across the city. Uh, you spot. That plane sound represents the passage of time. Now we're at the air 
airplane. Now you're at the airplane. Uh, you roll up to the Nukemak Municipal Airport. It is a rather small airport. It just has two little runways set off at like different angles from each other. Uh, so planes can take off in different wind conditions. And um, it's uh, a little after one in the morning. So uh, there aren't a lot of people there, but you do notice that uh, there is a, a bar adjacent to the, um, the airport. Uh, which oh, I think uh, is... is that helicopter that yeah, do we, the do we was see any terrible there? Do we see any terrible helicopter wreckage? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> helicopter has yeah, not uh, moved. What happened? Uh, you the the helicopter is still there. It it has not moved. And uh, if you are just walking around the airport, which it looks like you can do, you see other people kind of walking around casually. Not a lot, but there's like a handful of people uh, yeah. like moving luggage around or. Uh, like putting a, a little single engine plane into a hangar. Um, uh, you you walk up to, the, you walk near enough to the helicopter to see that uh, there is a pilot just just sleeping in the pilot seat. Did uh, we just park in short term parking? This is breaking my immersion. Where did we leave the car? Oh, there's just like uh, because it's a municipal airport. It's a little thing. There's just a, a parking lot nearby. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Augustine, um, I have noticed that you've really taken the initiative, you're a real trooper lately, and since uh, I have recognized that I try to recognize all of our strengths and work as a team and get the synergy going on, I've noticed that you have no social filter. Would you like to go talk to a stranger and then try to bite them? (laughs) Seems like the kind of thing that you're best best at out of all of us. You mean try to feed? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's uh huh. I was trying to say it in a way that he would understand. <laughs> My good man. <laughs> we can just would be you, good men. Yeah. Would you perchance like to masticate on a strange human perchance here at the heliport? By God, finally somebody speaks in an intelligible conversation. Of course, comrade, I'd be glad to fulfill this uh, obligation bestowed upon me by such a regal, esteemed office. And how. So the moment you get close enough to to the the helicopter, the pilot wakes up, startled. He goes, oh, <laughs> hey, hey, you guys need to hire a helicopter pilot. I've, uh, yeah, I could, I'm really hoping you guys... Want to want to hire? Don't you want to fly around a helicopter? Do you you sorry? You go, you go. And he seems very like out of out of sorts because he just uh, yeah I, I do yeah okay let's 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 do no, it no 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 Augustine we're, we're you gonna fine. let you gonna let me drive no we're fine listen hey, Augustine Darby <laughs> listen to this boys have have you guys ever heard of something called the Mile High Club? <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's when a vampire feeds in a helicopter. I don't think that's what it is. How high is the city <laughs> limits? I thought you were going to ask how oh, hot the pilot was. Last <laughs> if we go up. I, uh, I don't know how to answer that question, but you get the impression up is okay. Legally, I can tell you that <laughs> yeah. it extends infinitely what is the, to the sky. What is... This is a multi-purpose question. It is for both this, the height question, as well as the the drunk hella man. Uh, what is the legal limit? For what? For drinking and flying, but also for us being high. I know 40 feet is fine. I don't what? understand the question. Oh, like for like, bar. you guys need. How <laughs> high can we fall? What was going on no. with this pilot? <laughs> how high can we go above the town before Archon Glass kills us for leaving New Kamak? <laughs> Unknown. Okay. Oh no! <laughs> is, but you is there okay? A line in the airspace. You do get Darby, the impression that you would feel it Augusta? ahead of time if that was going to happen. Would, okay. You get a warning. 
Darby's been all in on helicopter rides this whole time. So he's like, yeah, okay. man, let's go. He wants he wants to drive the helicopter. He's like, all right, scoot over. Let's let's do this. No, no, we need to sidebar. <laughs> okay, Darby, I mean, you have yeah. fun. We'll take care of things over here. I, so, all right, right. you're lost. So as yeah. as Darby this is climbs be sweet. in, this, uh, this dude... I've already hel- been oh. very high today. The uh, the helicopter pilot immediately you see like his disposition change and he immediately gets the vibe of like oh this is someone with disposable money that wants to have a good time uh, and that's exactly what he's looking for and he says hey uh, I'm Dave Cooperum um, yeah man like you could have so much fun in a helicopter if you want to fly like I could help you get your license there's this guy no nah, dog I want to fly right now I'm like let's go let's let's take her up. Like we're not we're not talking we're not getting on a program, boss. We're 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 going we're shooting for the stars. Oh my god, no. Oh no. All right, man, it's two fifty an hour. Can you cover that? I'll tell you what, you let me drive, we'll double that. <laughs> well he's we'll, he's uh, he's waving he's waving at, at Augustine. We, 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 no. m- money's no object. We got we got you, boss. How about this? We get up in the air and I start telling you how it all works. Uh you don't have a a a, a license, do you? A helicopter license? No, hell no! I, I I got a professional driver's license, so so I'm I'm not starting from scratch. I'm good at driving. I'm good at driving weird stuff. I think you just let me do it. Just let you me know, go a, for it. A CDL is basically a helicopter license. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I think I got this. It, it stands for copter driver's license. I have never <laughs> felt more confident at anything in my entire <laughs> life than that I can fly this helicopter. <laughs> And you felt confident about a whole oh, lot of stuff. No. I always oh, feel confident. This pilot is broke. Oh, no. Why are we doing this? Oh. Why do we do anything? Oh! Wait. Excavo, you're right. This is a terrible idea. Yes. Darby won't be able to try and feed on him up there because we don't know if this pilot is also a meth head. I was never gonna. I oh, mean, not, there's other people. This is if my that guy. Gets them out of the here's here's the thing though. I thought me. I thought that was the whole thing we were going for. Darby, when the Darby gets close head. enough, Darby can tell that he is though. Oh, no. And you, you also, see, you yeah, see like a smell in Darby's Korea. nose. He's just. Oh no no no! We're we're good. We are we are good. My guy likes to party, don't you, boss? <laughs> what was it? What was uh, what was his name? Cooper. Uh, Dave, Dave Cooper. Cooper. Dave, Dave Cooperum. Dave. Oh, Cooperum. I thought I thought you were gonna do a DB Cooper situation for a second. Oh, it's the, here's here's the actual thing. Uh, he's he's Chopper Dave. Coming up at ten, explosions rip through Sea Lab. We'll have all the details. Plus. Chopper Dave. Hello! But I didn't want to just call him Chopper Dave, so Copper Dave, and then the Latin <laughs> word for copper is Cooperum, so he's David Cooperum. That's actually okay. DB Cooper would have been funnier if he was like actually DB Cooper. <laughs> actually, Dave. Yeah, not too late to wreck on it, but <laughs> he is that too. I think you and me are gonna have a blast. I'll tell you what. Let's let's go for it. So, uh, so they, uh, he, he gets a vibe that like, you're a cool dude. And he leans over to you. He's like, listen, I am on board. I used to do the same thing. There was this guy here in town. He used to, to book me all the time to like fly him and in, in his cal- helicopter around in my helicopter. He had this like cute little girlfriend and like, I'd like teach him how to do it. And, uh, the girl even like, I, I put her in the pilot seat. She tried it a little bit. Um, it was uh, it was pretty cool. He uh, he left town though, so like I don't have a main guy to like helicopter party with. So I've been kind of out of work. Yeah, he left. He moved away uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, I actually arranged all the transport of like all of his big pain in the ass stuff. We were gonna fly out like a big gun safe and a whole bunch of other things, uh, but. Uh, uh yeah yeah randy's out of town now so uh like dude i am oh, free anytime you Rand- want to do this Rand- and you could pay randy Dela- delacroix oh you know that, the guy yeah yeah me me and him go way back way back in fact i, I we we were part of his going away party 
Oh, awesome. God. You know, if, if you get a hold of speaking. him, I don't know if he's still pissed about that, uh, that, that, that transport with all of his stuff, like going down in the middle of the ocean. I, yeah, obviously, yeah, I was he's like, that. he's really pissed about that. Well, he, yeah, very, very pissed. Well, I, I you can make totally, it up to us though, probably with a fun helicopter ride for me right now. You know, if I do this for you for free, do you think you could like get a hold of Randy and like let him know, you know, I'm still cool. Like there's nothing I could do to like prevent that. And like, he probably made a mint on the insurance for that. Like, could you like oh, yeah. put in a good word? I'll tell you what. I, I will tell Randy the next time I see him anything you want me to. I, I'll put in the best word I can put in. Next time I lay eyes on that man. Well, here's the only other thing that I'd, I'd ask you to, to tell him. So he, he seemed to be Mr. Moneybags. He hired me all the time. Whenever he was having a party, he'd ring me up like, oh, I'm drunk, let's get the helicopter going. And uh, that was a pretty sweet gig. And there's like... No one else in town who's that cool and that rich. So oh, that's where you're wrong, boss. You're you're, you're meeting them right now. I, I I'm cooler than you even know. You got to take me up in the sky to see how fucking cool I can get. Well, yeah, but like, is this going to be the only time that you book me? Rooftop. Well, that depends on how it goes, son. You gonna <laughs> you gonna bring your A game or what? All right. Well, I was going to say, tell Randy, you know, he could, uh, he could arrange for me to like go to, you know, wherever he moved to and I could still be his helicopter dude, but maybe I could stay right here in New Kamak if, you know, if this, this, this is thing's going to fly on. over the ocean. I don't, I don't think so, chief. Like Rand, Randy's too far. It's time for new business. It's Darby season. <laughs> hey, you, you want to know what's really cool? I don't know. You lean, Darby leans in. What, what, what? Uh, I heard I heard that that Randy left his uh, his helicopter behind, and uh, when we would fly his helicopter, uh, he had bungee cords attached to it. It's uh, oh, what no questionably shit. illegal, wait, wait, but we do it wait, where super is late it? at night. It's not this one. There's uh, a different helicopter. Yeah, it was it was just in back behind his place, <laughs> behind his big mansion. There's a there's a helicopter. Yes, and Darby would have noticed this before. It had a big tarp over it, but like there's been a helicopter there this whole time. Yeah, we totally knew that as well. Uh, it was a thing that we've talked about a lot and very much internalized. So, uh, yeah. Very much. I, I also know where I Randy's know. helicopter is. In, in fact, Randy gave that helicopter to me. No this is, shit. This is serendipity, my guy. And why don't you fly this helicopter over to that to helicopter? To that helicopter? Hell And yeah. then we'll switch. Uh, no. We'll each take one of the helicopters up, and we can do like a dogfight or something. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, are these equipped with weapons? As, I mean... <laughs> as fun as that would be, uh, if you're looking to learn how to, how to fly a helicopter... Are I, you I listening could... to me? I'm looking to fly, <laughs> motherfucker. Let's go. In in all seriousness, I can't I can't see you die tonight. I want to teach you how to do it before I can condone you flying, going in blind. Uh, so you know, like when you sky Darby looks you him in the tingle. eye and he says consent, and then he is attempting to dominate. <laughs> oh my god, no! <laughs> So can I dominate Darby to tell him this is not a good idea? You are not getting my eye contact. No way. I am in the fucking zone trying to get this man's helicopter. <laughs> so drunken or at least heavily buzz helicopter pilot David Cooperum uh, says to you, I cannot tell you what you can and cannot do with your own property. If your helicopter is gassed up and ready to go and you want to fly it. That's none of my business, but I just have to say, sir, you seem rad as hell, and if you die tonight in a helicopter crash, I will be very sad that we don't get to party. So I would rather you ride with me and learn how to fly a helicopter, but it is your call. Can't he just fly on a droid ride? Like, not have Darby fly it, but, like, the pilot. Just take him on a joy ride. Yeah, Darby's it's like all right, all right. I will tell you what, I'll tell you what. On the on the way to my chopper, you can show me the ropes. 
It's, so it's he, like a five minute ride. <laughs> that should be more than enough. <laughs> so I, I, you convince me. You convince me. I'll let you give me a lesson, and then, uh, and then you know, we'll see what happens. To uh, to give you a sense of where you are in the city, um, uh, if you imagine like uh, like a clock face on the city, uh, Derby Manor's kind of at two o'clock, and the airport's kind of at ten o'clock. So it's kind of a short jump over the the northern half of of the city. Um, Wait, five ten minutes is is probably accurate. I don't know how fast helicopters go. Well, there's how fast they go <laughs> normally, and then there's how fast they go when Darby's driving. Darby speed. So, uh, Augustine, Archibald, and uh, Excavo, who might be even more emboldened to take charge of situations these days, uh, they you guys overhear all of this, um, and it and Dave is starting to like spin up the helicopter and get it ready to to lift off this is the happiest you've ever seen darby just easily he's just overjoyed with what is about to happen excavo there's only one solution here obviously we're not going to stop darby so the only thing we can do is get back to darby manor first and move the helicopter before he can fly it away um do I have my camera? That's awfully on decisive, my... there, Prince. It's awfully <laughs> decisive, awfully Do I have my, uh, with the good plans all of a sudden. <laughs> like I, I would take some of those with me wherever I go. I want to give one to Darby, so we can make sure he's okay. <laughs> you, you have a camera; it can record. Um, you. You don't. You would need to connect this camera to a local wireless network to oh. be able to monitor it. And in the air, that would not be available. Okay. Well, that doesn't work then. I mean, you could just monitor him over his phone. You could just say, like, hey, I'm going to call you. Just leave the phone. Like, leave it off the hook. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay, so do you, do you say that to Darby? Yes. Uh, hey, uh, I um, I don't know how well this is going to go, so uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to call you, um, answer the, and just leave it on. Just don't. You don't have to say anything to me. I just want to make sure you are okay up there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I saw the pilot earlier, and he did not look uh, sober, so. No, nah, he's cool as fuck. He, I, Darby's just like, all right, he, ta- mean, he takes, he's like, whatever, I don't care. Dave, okay, okay. <laughs> Dave hears all of this and he leans out like, no, nah, I'm good. You, you guys aren't coming. There's there's room for all of you. Ah, I, don't let these squares crash our party, no, Dave. We, 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 we got something good going business. on here. Uh, <laughs> have fun. Be safe. Uh, we need to go. These dudes are fucking lame. Let's get the hell out of here. I, I, and I appreciate, again, I look like David Attenborough. Uh, this is just a full <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like old man. Lame. A wild 70-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like Darby looks like David Attenborough. <laughs> uh, okay, so if no one else intervenes, uh, Dave shrugs, closes the door, and you see the, the helicopter blades slowly start to, to spin up. And uh, Dave uh, advises you to, you know, kind of stand back away from the helicopter. And uh, it begins to lift off. And I have a question for Darby. Darby, did you drive the group to the airport? Oh, yeah. 100%. Second question. Did you give the keys back to anyone as you were getting into the helicopter. No fucking way. <laughs> he wouldn't, and I would have been too concerned about uh, being in a helicopter with that man, so I wouldn't have said anything. <laughs> Zero percent <laughs> chance. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. There's no way that happened. So, 
all of you are presumably waving to Charlie uh, as uh. he is helicoptered away with well. the car key. Wait. Did you say I'm sure we could figure out how to hotwire a car? Oh, you Did you yeah, say that you this is in the the rough area of Nuker Tech? Um it is in the the like very general if you were on the top of the uh the air traffic control tower, you could see barely see the very bright lights of the Nuker Tech sign about a mile away. Okay. Everybody, don't worry. I've done this walk before, and it's not too bad. <laughs> oh, that walk? Okay, yeah. that sounded like it sh- It transformed you a little bit. Uh... I met my best <laughs> friend on that walk. <laughs> um, I, how fast do you think you could hotwire that car, Excavo? Well, I'm just going to keep the call on. And you then... wouldn't download a car. <laughs> oh, but I would. So Darby, as soon as they're like reasonably up in the air, like leans over the controls like he's trying to learn and then goes for the, you know, tries to take take some blood. I'm just going to feed, feed on the guy. Wiki Howe has three ways to hotwire a car. I would definitely <laughs> let you try to hotwire a car. Hacking. Yes. So, Darby, I'm going to make you roll for that just because uh, of the awkwardness of, like, uh, he's he's strapped in, he's got a helmet, he's got all this stuff, and you just have to, like, maneuver into his Well, so, so here's here's my strategy. Um, I have a bunch of meth. It's been established that I, I don't remember who I stole it oh, from. Yeah. yeah, you do. But I, I have a bunch of meth, and I'm going to, like, offer it to my new friend because, uh, I like, I know he's down. And so that's I'm going to use that as my excuse to get in close. And then I'm he's going to be I'm, like, I'm down to roll. he's going to be like, oh, you gave give me the same special kisses that Randy always did. <laughs> it's it's very special possible. kisses. Um, so you uh, you pull out the bag of meth. And uh, what do you say to him? I'm, <clears throat> my my whole pitch. I'm, I'm basically like hitting on him. Uh, like fr- friend hitting on him, but like maybe you know maybe a little more than that. And I'm just, hey You're man, I, I, romantically ambiguous. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like man. I, I don't often meet somebody that I hit it off with like this. I got I got to tell you, in, in my in my whole life, like you, you're one of the coolest dudes I ever met. And I, I know, I can tell. I don't even need to ask first that you're down with the crystal. <gasps> and I tell, <laughs> yes. See, look. Look, damn, look, I think you and me, I think you're going to be my helicopter guy. I think, I think you're going to, look, I've already had a little bit of this. Why don't, why don't you have a little bit and then we'll talk about it. <clears throat> so you see an immediate reaction from the guy, uh, an immediate like, holy shit, cool reaction. And then as you continue talking, it feels like he's, he's thinking more about it and kind of a realization sets in and he says, ah, uh, <laughs> Man, that's uh, that's that's pretty cool, and no judgment. But uh, uh, let's uh, let, let's let's finish this flight. Uh, I, you gotta understand. Like, I just met you. Like, let's let's get to that. Darby that looks so disappointed. Like, really plays it up. Like he's been crushed. Like rejected by his new buddy. And just like, oh, I get well. Well, hey, Some, hey. Sometimes you're just wrong about a vibe. I guess I thought you were going to be my my helicopter guy, but I, yeah, no, I, it's, I guess uh, you're. I guess you're not as cool as I thought. <laughs> no, 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 it's no, no, it's fine. It's fine. You you know what? Why don't you Why don't you take me back to the airport? No, hey, actually, hey, this you this know, this is where this is where I'm coming from, buddy. Uh, I, I I've never on, seen you before. Speaker. Yeah, we're muted. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I've I've never seen you before. I. Uh, like I don't know if you're a cop, and like this, this is kind of what a Darby I'd, spits again. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck! I ain't no fucking cop. Like, uh, let's, right, yeah, let's 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 plan let's let's plan to party, but just uh, I got I got to set set this bird down first. Like, is that is that cool? You know that? Like, you can light up all you want. You can do it right now if you want to. That's that's fine. No no cops in here. If if you're not one, then no cops in this copter. <laughs> Um, in fact, I call it just a tur, because there's no cop in it. And he's starting to look a little nervous. And then fly it. Oh no! Oh no! So I'm torn between my, 
Now, on one hand, my desire to incapacitate this guy and steal his helicopter. But on the other hand, I think he's cool. And I having a friend that would helicopter me around on demand seems really useful. Um, I'm going to take a, a willpower check because I think Darby's like uh, left brain, his planning brain – is like, I'm just going to get the helicopter back at Darby Manor. This will be fine. We can figure out the, uh, you know, curse some other way. And then the devil on his other shoulder is like, get his blood, learn what he's got, and then take this motherfucking helicopter and crash it into something. I crash um, it into something. Oh, my God, it's in the plan. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, fortitude. I uh, got a... Seven dice. Say, I got seven dice. And I'm going to say I need three successes. It's, that's a high bar. But statistically, it is, I think, likely. One, two, three. And a one. Which makes it two. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm burning for celerity. I'm going to go f- – I, I see that my ruse isn't working. And Darby's usually pretty good at bamboozling people. Um, and it just didn't really work this time. So, yeah, I'm just going to go shock and awe. Oh, boy. Hang on a second. Okay, Google. How high do helicopters fly? The average altitude for a helicopter to fly at ranges around 12,000 to 15,000 feet. Whew! Wonderful. Okay. Three miles Let's say it's, up. It's, it's half of that. It's yeah. – uh, uh, let's, I, I don't think you'd, you'd be going all the way up there. I think at, at most, uh, I'll say like 5,000, um, per mile. so, uh, <laughs> if you burn for celerity, I'm going to say no role is necessary to, um, to actually, uh, achieve the bite. So the exchange goes like this. You're like, Hey, meth. And he's like, yeah. Oh, wait, uh, maybe later. And you're like, ah, ha! and then. You bite him in the throat and you start yeah. drinking his blood. And yep. uh, you were two down. Oh my god. He's drinking his blood in the air. So you top yourself off. Oh no. And uh, uh, I am able to I am able to get blood. I am able to get points for it. Yes, indeed. Are you above the airport? Yeah, I am above the airport. I mean we just left. So I'm I'm high in the air near the airport. Like the outskirts of that. You've uh like the length of time for that conversation to take place, you've you've exited the uh, like the footprint of the airport, but you're not far That's from. That's what it. I was worried about. Well, but these things it works more not than in the air, not at the airport. Oh, um, for the purposes of answering the question, you uh, you're in range of you can feed at the airport to just throw you a bone and okay. answer that question for you. <laughs> Uh, Darby is confirmed. And, Dar- and Darby signals through like, mmm, delicious, yeah. <laughs> so let's say, uh, yeah. I'll wreck on that a little bit. Um, uh, the, the helicopter has just gone vertically by the time, uh, Darby feeds. Okay. And, uh, you sink your fangs into him and he, uh, the kiss happens and, uh, he starts to go limp. He... Uh, his hand falls off of, I think there's like a steering wheel kind of thing or a yeah, joystick. Yeah, yeah. I didn't look it up yeah, ahead like, of time. You didn't think Darby was going to steal the helicopter? Do you even know your own players? So, uh, so the helicopter starts to very slowly drift in in one direction which is toward darby manor and very slowly lose altitude and a few moments pass and uh it's very slowly starting to spin around in a circle um there isn't an immediate and dramatic crash uh fortunately slash unfortunately i don't know what you're going for i so i want to seize control like my whole plan is to take control of the helicopter like (laughs) you have an opportunity so are you trying to drive it right now yeah yeah and immediately once i like i want to like you know kind of hold him out of the way and then take over the controls and i'm looking this up it is it does appear to be like a, a a throttle stick situation 
um, from my brief Googling. We've all played Nintendo. Excavo hears this conversation happening and then the sounds of a struggle and hears that the conversation is abruptly stopped. Hears, mmm, delicious. And probably knows what is happening. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, he's out of it. Um, uh, Basically, like, asleep for a moment but you you know that like uh probably within a minute he's he's gonna wake up but yeah you can just tear him out of the pilot seat and hop in in his place yeah that sounds, that sounds good okay so i want him to wake up just confused in the other seat like i just like david <laughs> copperfield him, and like i've been driving this whole time you didn't even do any of that math are you okay like just like play it off like this is how it's been holding up. So I'm going like bold, only confidence. Like just, I have been piloting this the whole time and I am a good helicopter pilot. That is my, that is what I'm attempting to pull off. All right. So what the fuck would this role be? I think <laughs> that it would be wits, which is like improvising, like figuring stuff out in the moment. Uh, plus, Mean, I, like the strength to like switch spots in a small helicopter like that. And, nah, like, I mean he gets no. that would be that'd be tricky if you didn't have a couple bouts of potence and f- effectively six. No, sorry, seven strength. Um, so I I think you're just gonna have to roll your wits. I don't think you can use so any just, of your skills. I, wait, dr- drive obscure doesn't yeah, get me anything. Drive. I have an ob- I have an obscure driving specialty. He's driving. You do. But like a subterfuge or something? I don't know. That is, I, I think we specify that as being weird stuff with wheels or tank treads or hovercraft things, uh, ground-based vehicles. I'm afraid Piloting that is cannot its own help you. Thing? Hey, to be fair, that helicopter is about to be a, a ground-based Okay, vehicle, all right. So. You have little faith. <laughs> All right, wits only, wits only, fine. Give me no abilities at all, just pure wits. I don't think that any amount of ground driving skills and experience would transfer over to a helicopter. Uh, What about my expertise in machines to figure out the control scheme of the helicopter, like sussing out this? pitch, pitch and yaw, and like I just know how machines work, so I think I can figure out the controls. <laughs> how about this? Pitch uh, and yaw. How about uh, two different things? One, an an intelligence plus technology role to try to quickly figure out what the what the things do. Um, if you <laughs> succeed in that then you could roll wits plus technology to to fly. But both of those are going to be at a high difficulty. Okay, let's fucking go. So, because you don't have a lot of time, and this is all yeah. very... Uh, I'm, going, I'm going decisive here. Um, let's fucking do it. I'll say difficulty eight for both of these rolls. Okay. So just pure wits first? Um, or no, no, no just no. technology first? Yeah, figuring out the controls is uh, intelligence plus technology. That'd be six dice for you. Oh, baby! Oh, shit. Those count, by the way. Though I have a specialty in machines. That's so five. five. <laughs> That's five successes. Uh, I'm going to say, like, you somehow, like, you are not familiar with helicopters, but you're familiar with machines and like drivable machines in general. <laughs> this has allowed you to get like just enough, like to intuit just enough about how a helicopter works that your difficulty for piloting it is going to go down uh, to just seven. Uh, so you figured out what does what, at least all the most important stuff. Uh, so give me a... Uh, a flat uh, wits roll. Um, no, I thought you said that's... I could use technology because oh, if, yeah, if yeah, I yeah. succeeded. Correct. Uh, wits plus technology, difficulty seven. Let's fucking go. Yeah, that's three 
uh, three or four, depending on if the, uh, regardless, you've steadied the helicopter and uh, you are flying it. Uh, you recognize vaguely like there's it's pointed in the direction of a forest. You know, the Darby Manor is adjacent to a forest. Um, you vaguely know how to get it back home. Um, let's switch back to uh, Augustine, Archibald and Excavo. Um, what was your plan for getting back to Darby Manor? Uh, try to hotwire the car. There were competing ideas. Yeah, the uh, the alternative to hotwire in the car is walk. walking, which has a zero percent chance of beating Darby and foiling his plan, which would just make Augustine's day so hard. Walking um, an hour takes uh, fifteen to twenty two minutes, according to my phone. Walking one hour. <laughs> oh, sorry, what? walking for a mile. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I just broke the concept of time. Sorry. <laughs> it's a fast hour. I can walk an hour so fast. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like you're walking twice, like you're running. <laughs> Did you guys uh, ever so see who's that, doing that tweet something. about how running was invented? I am <laughs> going to our vehicle and going to hotwire it. However, I want, I need help breaking into the actual vehicle like i don't have like a lock pick kit i'm not on assuming me. that it was locked darby did you lock the car no it's not oh oh my god i break okay. the window with my tonto anyway <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, what? <laughs> yes <laughs> no it didn't even cross my mind that we were hot wiring our own car just based on how we are. I assumed we were <laughs> abandoning our car and hot wiring no! a different car. You have the option to do no, that. No, it looks pretty easy cars. according to uh, e uh, WikiHow. It looks pretty easy, actually. Uh, Kimber, international car thief. Enter the car. I mean, <laughs> use, your, use the resources at your disposal. Some, hey, sometimes re you don't have just to hack. Just read it out loud for our audience so that um. we can be an educational <laughs> program that teaches okay, okay, okay. all well, the listeners. Well, the first step is to enter the car. So our car isn't unlocked, so we Got enter it. the car. So so let's fast forward to Excavo That's quickly hard. looks up how to hotwire a car, which I believe yeah. would be easy to look up. Yeah, it's um, pretty easy. This could be, this is kind of a mix of the larceny skill and the technology knowledge. Uh, I'm going to round yeah. those two for you and say uh, you're going to do, uh, this is going to be an intelligence plus technological larceny roll. Uh, please roll seven dice for okay. me. And I think standard difficulty is fair. I think this is, this is probably something that uh, Excava's even uh, like done three. before. I've got three right yes yes one two yeah three, four, three successes minus one is three yeah and i think for this either it works or it doesn't so like three successes is more than enough the car starts and Yay. i assume you all jump into it and you fly <laughs> over to darby manor conveniently the MKT is, it runs in a big circle uh, around kind of the outer edge of the city. And uh, it passes very nearby the airport and very nearby Darby Manor. So uh, you actually have a chance of hopping on it and rocketing over to the vicinity of Darby Manor and getting out and getting to Darby Manor uh, at about the the same time or possibly even beating Darby. Um, I think your chances of like who would arrive first are pretty even. So how about um, who is driving? Darby uh, doesn't know we're racing. So uh, he is not like trying to get his goal is to fool uh, Chopper Dave like he's just mind fucking Chopper Dave right now. So he wants to land beautifully in the backyard at a responsible speed, just like giving Chopper Dave a wink when he comes to. It's <laughs> like this was a crazy idea, Dave. I can't believe it's working. 
and yeah, so I'm I'm not trying to race. If they're if they're like going as fast as they can to get there, they're probably gonna win. I mean, so I'm I'm driving because the way you have to like. Yeah, you're already in the driver's hot seat. Hot wire it. I'm already in the driver's seat, so I'm just everybody else get in. I'm driving. It is also not a competition for me, so <laughs> I'm just like let's. Go back to Darby Manor. Well, I think you know that you're you're trying to beat him, though. Um, or, oh, actually, that was Archibald's suggestion. Um, are you trying to get there, like, before Darby does? Ideally. Are we? I mean, you can literally talk to me on the phone. Like, I don't know why we yeah. have to, like, just like... Well, I can hear you, but helicopters are very loud. Mm, true, true. Mm, so I would, I would not be able to hear you, most likely. Yeah. Or we could hit the recycling center and check that out too. I yeah, go. I, that's that's a great plan. If Darby was there, he would say, "Go do that." Darby's got this. I got this. So we think he'll be fine. No, in the air. That's no. something Darby might well, say. I, mean, I got no. this. I He's in the air. We won't this. be able to like <laughs> do anything about right it, really. I'm I'm ah. sure I'm sure that Darby did say something triumphant when it like clicked for him that he knew how to fly the helicopter like oh this is a Unix system I know this you know just like <laughs> just like you guys knew like, that oh. uh, that he could fly I believe I could fly He's he doesn't just sound like, in a hurry to get back so uh, yeah we do have another place to check out I don't know how far away the recycling center is but we can check that out. Is that one of our cats, Andy? It is one of our cats. Aha. Uh-huh. Because I don't hear him from over here. I got earbuds in. It's because they're hungry. Ah, no. They'll survive. No, or they, they get fed. They don't survive without food. I'm pretty sure. By the way, uh, has Augustine fed his bear cub recently? Uh, yeah, I believe. Priorities. The fake bear cub is more important. I've been feeding him intermittently with snacks of tomatoes and various other plant nibblings. I was just kind of helping Kimber tease you about feeding the cats. That's what I was getting at. Uh, Bad at taking care of all (laughs) of his pets. Whoa! The recycling center... The recycling center is a bit of a hike. It is... Uh, about like seven or eight o'clock on on the clock face. If you're looking at we're at, at two o'clock. So I mean, it's pretty. You're much at like ten town. o'clock. So you're going we're, like oh, south. Oh right, our house is at two o'clock. Okay, yeah. So we just have to go south. There isn't an MKT route across the center of the city. Oh, uh, there is. We're to you the can... west. And then we have to go south? Yeah, you can take uh, the MKT to get to the recycling center uh, faster. Whichever. Let's do it. We haven't been in the the tunnels for a minute. Yeah, we actually went through a bunch of bullshit to get access to that. (laughs) Should probably take advantage of it. Well, if you did not go through that that bullshit, uh, there would be trains blocking your way all the time, especially if you've recently pissed off some some people that organize like control the trains so that was the the functional thing it uh more than anything removed an impediment but also allows you to beat traffic and possibly even beat helicopters which would normally not be possible uh so your car uh is heading in the direction of the recycling center uh we go back to darby and his hijacked helicopter and uh, Dave Kuprum, uh waking up, startled and confused, and immediately like reaching for controls uh, as the helicopter touches down in the uh, rather spacious backyard of Darby Manor, uh, within sight of Randy's helicopter covered with a tarp. And Dave says, Darby's just all business. He just pat, pats him. All right. That was fucking awesome. All right. I'm going to switch over to my chopper now. You want to stay in this one? He says, just. Dude, what happened? I know. I know. I, I start. I was flying this when we lifted off. What happened? You said you said I could park it. We made this whole plan together. You're fucking crazy, man. 
Did you do some of that math? No, no. Anyway, all right, all right. That was fun. That was fun. Darby's just playing it off, walking away. All right, I'm going to go get my chopper now. Okay, I'll see you up there. I'll see you in the skies, boss. Woo! So he looks very disturbed, very bothered by by what just happened. Uh, but after a few moments, he uh, he he gets out of the helicopter and he follows you over to Randy's helicopter. And he's like, okay, uh, so we're going to be, you're going to be flying this around tonight? And he's like, helping yeah. you take the tarp off. Well, you said you didn't want me to fly yours. And then you're like, all right, give it a try. And I did. But, you know, I want to I wanna try a couple different helicopters tonight. Why, why stop at just one? I mean... Well, I'm good at this shit. Like you, you told me that you uh, you didn't have a, a flying license. Uh, I guess I don't. You you have flying experience. But you just don't have the license. Is that what you meant? Yeah, I, I got experience. Oh, okay. I thought you were a newbie at this. I was I was just looking out for you. Okay, yeah. So and he starts to say all this like technical uh, helicopter jargon about uh, Randy's helicopter, and he's pointing at stuff, and he points out the uh, there are two uh, bungee cords uh, like coiled up in the body of the the main non pilot part, the bed of it. I don't know helicopter parts. Um, and how how up. big is the is the chopper? Uh, it is uh, big enough that uh, there's room for like four people to be seated behind where the pilot and co co pilot the helicopter yeah. co pilots. I don't know. I think so. So it's pretty pretty good sized chopper. It's a six passenger uh, helicopter. Yeah, and it has uh, it has two doors on on either side of the like backseat area and uh, two bungee cords coiled up, but like attached to the outside. So like you could get attached and then like jump off of either side of the helicopter. So like me and Augustine, for instance, or, or, or maybe me and Archibald, he could jump and then jump all the way back up. Like he, if, if he, you know, if he landed on the ground, he could use his aw- awesome jumping skills to add to the inertia of the bungee cord and jump literally all the way back up into the helicopter. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We could drop him down and have him like grab people and bring them all the way back up with his mad. All right. That's maybe I've gone too far. Um, Anyway, uh, Darby's <laughs> overjoyed and is just like, "All right, how much gas we got? Let's, uh, all right, all right, let's uh, let's fire this bad boy up." Says the tank is three quarters full. Yeah, Darby gets behind the in the pilot seat and and does his best to repeat the process that he saw Chopper Dave go through earlier to turn the helicopter on and get it ready to go. You're trying to do this like all of a sudden while someone's watching. Uh, give me a yeah. wits. Um, a wits plus technology role. Actually, that made it a lot easier for you. Uh, that's uh, eight dice. I mean, I dice. can do it with a high, higher difficulty. Yeah, eight dice difficulty eight, please. So I, I failed miserably. This is a full botch. Yeah, full botch. Um, no, no, no. It's just no success. Oh, yeah, it is a botch. No, it's it's a full botch because it's difficulty eight. Um. Yeah, so uh, so Dave's like, uh, like, all right, what's, by the way, what's your name? I can't believe I haven't asked your name this whole time. For, uh, Darby, man, I thought I told you before. Maybe you did. I, I don't, something's weird with my head. I, I, I feel out of sorts. <coughs> Was anyway. it all the meth from before? <laughs> uh so let's get this bird fired up and uh, let's let's get going. And you're like, yeah. And you start, you look at everything, you assess, and then kind of look at him and start flipping things. And uh, Dave immediately gets like a curious look on his face. Like he just saw something very wrong. And you're trying to assess what the controls do and also kind of based on his reaction like your hand hovers over something he's like uh and <laughs> you move away from it you're like uh this and dave's like 
Have you not started one of these models? No, I always, I always pick it up once it's already been going, like we did on the first time. I, I was just trying to show off, Dave. I need, I need somebody else to get them started for me. All I'm right. more of a finisher. Well, I can get you going. <laughs> Uh, so, and he starts, he explains like, here's the thing, you get the engine going, here's the thing to start the, this and the, that. Does um, he tell Darby what he had done wrong? <laughs> like <laughs> you turned on the emergency brake. Uh, no, he, uh, he just gives you instructions for how to, how to start it up. Uh, could you give me a flat intelligence roll? Let's say standard difficulty. Uh, if Darby, actually absorbs this information and remembers it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a smart man. <laughs> no. <laughs> Darby just nodding sagely like, oh yeah, okay, okay, yeah, oh, I got it, I got no. it. So, uh-huh. Oh my god. So Chopper Dave gets, gets everything uh, started. And, and Darby, somewhat alarmingly, is just like, uh, this this one controls just like the other one, right? <laughs> like, like this this lever is the same as that as the lever from the middle. Like he's just trying to make sure that his his insight <laughs> that, that he gathered from the first helicopter is going to translate at least once he gets it going. And and Dave says, I guess in some ways. All right, so where are we flying to? <laughs> Um, uh, well, you know where that recycling plant is at? <laughs> yeah, I know the recycling plant. Uh, my, my friends are, are going to be heading over there in a minute. So I, I thought, I thought maybe we could scout it out. Why are they going to the recycling plant? It's like, it's like uh, two in the morning. No, he can't hear me, but I'm like, quit. <laughs> no, they can I mean, hear the, you. The, the, cho- the chopper's now. not on now. Yeah. What? If you're just like, no, no, don't. I'm like, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, shit. Hey, wait, what? Why not? Aren't Why we going are you telling there? this strange man what we're doing? Me and Dave are friends. What? This he is my hears this. boy. Like, I'm not, I'm not, am I strange? No, nah, I mean, well, you're a little fucked up, Dave. <laughs> but look, I, that, that's a, <laughs> neither here nor there. I, game recognized game, Dave. But, uh, <laughs> don't follow us. Well, where, where am I supposed to go? I got two helicopters now. Wherever you want. <laughs> we have a vehicle. <laughs> ha, wait, I got the car key. Did you hotwire my car? <laughs> what the fuck? God damn it. You didn't give us the keys. What did you expect us to do? On your jack again? <laughs> That's what I get for being your goddamn chauffeur all the time. Can't even do well, anything Well, I mean, yeah, Sweet. this is what we get. You, you did give us the keys. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, we had to. We had to hotwire the car. It's actually, I figured it out uh, very easy to do. So I have that. All right, I'll tell you what. Now. I'll tell you what. I'm going I'm to scout around and, and, and survey the city. I'll see what okay. I can find from the, from the, from the skies. Just scout. I'm going to scout. So uh, probably really, okay. probably really fast, and probably for like a while. So don't um, don't call me back. I gotta go. Bye. Oh, oh, oh. hang up. Uh, what? How do they say you do you? So yeah, Darby's just gonna be joyriding. Like, let's fucking go, Dave. Let me get your number. Wait, can we? Do we have a radio? Can we talk to each other from like the headset or something? He reaches uh, into the the back and uh actually i i think what he would do is he'd be like uh, yeah both helicopters have uh the the helmets with the radio in them and he tells you what frequency that he's he's on um which might be just like a standard frequency that all pilots use i i, I don't really know per- but even funnier he tells you <laughs> how to uh how to to be in touch with them when you are in the the helicopter you can Maintain All right. Darby puts his helmet on and he treats it like a CB radio the whole time. Just like, breaker one nine, hella breaker, breaker, hella, hella breaker. We got ourselves a helicopter convoy. Let me know if there are any speed traps up here. 
<laughs> yep, yep. And so, yeah, I'm just, I'm taking off and I'm just driving around in the sky, probably like too low to the ground, don't know any of the rules about how you determine your flight path or anything like that. And I'm just looking for something suspicious. I just, I just got my, my eyes open like Batman. So, um, so before you take off, uh, Dave is hanging out with you and he's overhearing this well, the conversation is happening over the phone and he asks, uh, what are you, what are you looking for in the city? I've spent a lot of time flying over the city. Um, I might be able to, to help. Like, wh- what are you looking for? Well, uh, there's all kinds of criminals out and about, ne'er-do-well evildoers. Okay. Like... If you're a cop, that's cool. I don't have anything against cops. I think and he the... spits again. I fucking told you, son. I take the law into my own hands. Is our bat signal like sitting out at the house? The bat signal was still at the Abbott family abattoir. Oh, I thought we had it. Okay. Wish I had a remote. A remote I thought he would have seen that. it and been like, "Oh my god." <laughs> so he's like, uh, "Are you uh, like a vigilante or?" I don't know what that means, but probably. I mean, <laughs> it sounds like something I do. That, why do you, I gotta ask, why do you do that? Why, why do people, you know, put themselves in harm's way? Like, I mean, there are cops that are paid to, like, go after. He spits again. <laughs> okay, all right. So you're, you're patrolling for crime in a helicopter. That's your, that's what you're going for? I can see real good. So I'm going to get way up high, higher than <laughs> is probably safe. And then I'm going to be scouting like an eagle. Like an eagle scout. What are you going to do if you see like someone getting their purse snatched? Darby takes a sideways glance over the bungee cords. He's like, I'll, I'll figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Dave shrugs. And says, "Okay, you want you want me to follow along next to you, like kind of be your escort?" Yeah, I said we got ourselves a convoy. It can't have a convoy of one, Dave. All right, let's get in the air. Yeah, Dave. You fucking. And Darby, idiot. Darby does the exaggerated. <laughs> let's get it. Let's get it spinning. So but yeah, he yeah. he uh, tries to he takes off and he gets he goes straight up for like a while, like an awkward <laughs> amount of time. And then he starts, you know, a, a slow circle expansion around Darby Manor. Just looking around with his heightened senses. All right. Uh, and Dave goes up into the air. And uh, you are both in the air. And we're going to swap over to Augustine and Archibald and Excava, who have arrived at the new Kamak Recycling Center or plant or location. And... Uh, I, I don't know. It's just any... a landfill. <laughs> it's just called it's just another a recycling landfill. Place. Yeah. It's Black just a giant. A it's, a big, it's a burn pit. Uh, yeah. Have any of you ever been to a recycling center? Like in person? No. No. Are we going to go on a field trip? Let's go on a field trip. <clears throat> um, I I've been to one. And I assume it's similar to all of them. Uh, so I assume all recycling centers are uh, super gross and disorganized. And when you go to them, it's uh, like big, like warehousey structures, kind of like just full of big piles of raw materials, just dirty, gross, disorganized. If you have any kind of like, like cleanliness kind of OCD or like organization triggers mm. recycling center would be a very difficult place to hang out because it's, I it's where lots that. of stuff gets, uh, gets like transported to it and then separated out into big piles and, uh, cleaned. And it's, it's all, uh, like piles of shit and also, recycling centers are places where you can, like, people can just drive up and drop off things like old electronics, um, cars. Uh, oh, I've dropped off stuff before. I'm not totally yeah. sure about the cars, but yeah. So there are also just piles of things that people have left there. It's chaos. Uh, but 
not a lot is going on at a recycling center at about two in the morning. Uh, you drive up and you see all of this through the gates, but you you do see that there is uh, the whole thing is fenced off, and there's uh, there's a main gate that you would drive through to get into this like large area, um, and the gate is locked. Do we see any signs of any people being in the vicinity? Tell me about uh, what you're doing. Do you just like drive up and idle and you're just like scanning it? I want to, we want to park and like have the lights off. Like if we're the only car there, that would look kind of weird. Like, hey, here we are. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to see if there are any, uh cameras that i can check uh excavo please give me an intelligence plus investigation role difficulty five difficulty five. Oh, yeah wait yes <laughs> it's like that's one, a lot of ones one success <laughs> enough it is enough <laughs> Um, you look around and you see no signs of cameras and like, you've spent enough of your time, like planting cameras, hacking into cameras, avoiding cameras that, you know, all the places where, uh, like a smart person would place cameras if they wanted to you know, this place to be covered like that. And you don't see cameras in any of those places. So uh, you think it's reasonable to conclude that there are no cameras at this place at all. Um, however, as you're scanning around, uh, you do hear the sounds of uh, at least one person walking around and uh, stuff being moved around and jostled. There's, there's some sort of commotion like, Someone's moving around equipment or something, but you don't get any other details. It just sounds like there's like maybe one or two people walking around and moving stuff inside somewhere inside the grounds of the recycling center. Well, everyone, this uh, this fence seems a little bit high. I mean, if only there was someone here who could jump very very high and easily get over it so the fence is not difficult for any of you to scale however archibald can uh get over it much more gracefully than anyone else nimbly in a single bound <laughs> all right superman <laughs> Uh, I said when you jump when you jump over i uh provided you can send send you over with paddington so I have to squabble with getting over the fence less. Okay, sure. Oh, that's right. We have a small bear with us. Okay. Is this has this bear grown at all? In. in a few days, probably not. Not, no. not like the last week. I keep week. thinking it's been much longer <clears throat> than it's been. I don't think it's okay, very common so. to do a role playing game like this where every minute of your lives is included, and we rarely ever fast forward. So, like two years is covered two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like usually when like oh you have like a couple days of adventuring like to get from one place to the other like that's usually when the time skips are but everything is like within a half hour. <laughs> okay, I jump over with Paddington. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I I I wait until that happens. Like okay, nothing has no alarms have gone off. I'm going to go over. Uh, can we see the lock? Uh, yeah, the lock on the I gate mean, is just a, a big padlock. It takes a key. I'm just going to bap it with the wand of fixing unfixing until it clicks open. Wait, if it's a pad <laughs> lock, then pad ing tin should be able to unlock it. Oh my god. Mm -mm. Uh, is it is it possible for me to just bap or bap it with that wand until something silly happens? You hit it with the wand, and there's there's no reaction from the wand. It doesn't change. Uh, it appears that the wand of repairing has no effect on something that is not broken. Dang, damn. Uh, okay, then I, I climbed over. Yeah, I climb over. Uh, okay, you climb over. 
Are you heading in the direction of the sounds that you heard? Yes. Yes. I grab Paddington and I'm I'm kind of excitedly walking in that direction. Okay. So um, I'm going to assume that you're doing this uh, more or less stealthily. Um, mm-hmm. So you do that. You're trying not to draw attention to yourselves. And there are uh, structures all over the place, like sheds, big, like, warehousey things with, like, one whole open side that it looks like, uh, like, dump trucks might, like, back into and, like, dump a bunch of metal or plastic or glass or whatever. Um, And you go around a corner and uh, you kind of peek around it and you see a very strange sight. So first, uh, far in the background, you see that the fence that runs around the recycling center has uh, part of it that has been uh, opened up uh, uh, unofficially. Basically, like there are posts uh, all, all along it. And someone has apparently taken uh, like, like wire cutters, bolt cutters, and like like uh, opened up a section so that they they like made a door uh, in such a way that looks like they they made this so that they could like open up a big chunk of the fence for a vehicle to drive in and then when they're done like they can close this and it doesn't look like a hole was uh, was made in in the fence. Uh, I might be doing a shitty job describing it, but anyway, you see a van and you see how that van got in in the back. This van is a kind of nondescript, windowless black van. Um, and you see three people picking through a big pile of electronics and loading some stuff uh, into this van. All of these people are mimes. And uh, they are dressed all in black. They have the face paint. They have berets. None of them are talking to each other, perhaps unsurprisingly. And uh, they're just like picking through all the stuff. It, it looks like they broke in and they're just uh, like stealing stuff that they might consider valuable. We had heard of the, the mimes before, right? They had been brought up. They're like a yeah. thing in the city that some people know about. Okay. Augustine, you're a people person. Do you want to try your hand at some mimes? Um, Do you want to offer them a tomato in this trying time? That is precisely what I am up to. <laughs> uh, I see them operating. I walk up wordlessly. I'm trying to like speak with my hands the same way I would with my word space. And <laughs> the same way? <laughs> in, in my left hand, a tomato. Uh tap, sit my chest, hands in the airs uh, to indicate awesome, points at bear. I like to think he's also narrating kind of do... this out loud. <laughs> Paddington. Hands in the air. <laughs> I tap on my he, chest. He thinks that they can't hear him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, after doing visual... Yeah, they're not deaf. See, I wait a little Barely bit, mark. and then I go, uh, But he, ha- they can But Augustine does not know this. He just assumes they are deaf and mute. So I Did you have five intelligence? Why else would they be mute? There can't possibly be another Dumb. reason. <laughs> I punctually my visual introductions by offering the nearest one a tomato, uh... And just kind of hold it out, waiting for them to respond. So there are three mimes there. Uh, there is uh, one... There are two guys and one uh, lady. Lady mime. My mess. My met? A my met. My met. Mimestress? Wouldn't a my met also be just a small mime? Mm. Anyway. That's, that's probably like a, a mim. Boy ones are Mr. Mime. And girl ones are Mrs. Mime. Okay. The girl ones are Mr. Rhyme. There are two <laughs> misters, and there is one apparently married female mime. And Mrs. they immediately stop what they're doing when they see you, but they don't react 
aggressively. They don't react alarmed, but you have their full attention. And they see that you are trying to draw their attention to a tomato and your bear cub. And they, and one, they look at each other and then one of them steps up to you and without saying anything, uh, greets you like a mime would like, (laughs) and then just kind of waits. This is weird. They're not, they're not like you caught me. No, nope, they're totally cool with being caught, apparently. Or do they have red noses by chance? They That's like a clown would? that That's you're thinking clown. of. <laughs> okay. Um, do you so say do... that to them? Or are you like, <laughs> oh, where's your red <laughs> nose? <laughs> <laughs> no! Uh, but can, following <laughs> down the train of misunderstanding, uh, Augustine applies the tomato to his own nose as though it were a clown nose. Uh, and begins um, assisting and just grabbing various items and putting it <laughs> In their van until he kind of sus- <laughs> until he can figure out what the shit's going on. Uh, You're going to help them steal electronics from the recycling center. That seems that like something that Excava right would be into, actually. <laughs> so when you put the tomato <laughs> on your baffling. own nose, the mime that's engaging with you uh, responds with an exaggerated mute clown laugh, like. <laughs> Uh, but when you start trying to put stuff into the van, uh, the other two um, kind of politely, gently uh, get in your way and, and wave you off. And uh, one of them reaches into their pocket and presents you with uh, a business card. And uh, the business card uh, is for something called the Van of Amazing Savings. And there is a phone number and a promise of whatever it is that you want. Call and the van of amazing savings will show up and we will probably be able to give it to you at a steep discount. But they, it's phrased in some, you know, a more slick way than I can improvise right now. Uh, so you get the impression that this is a group of people who might steal stuff and go around reselling that to people and are bold enough to actually freely tell anyone what the phone number is to to summon their van and buy some of this shit. I've put up with a, a lot of humor in this program that's a little <sighs> bit off color. Put up with it. But I... Where I kind of draw the line and do get offended is, frankly, your your offensive representation of mimes. That they steal. <laughs> I actually, I don't remember... Thieves, every last one of them. The mimes came from the original incarnation of the Nuka Mac game <laughs> that Steve and I ran as a LARP. I don't remember which of us came up with the mime concept, but they were a large... They were a big part of that original story. And one of their main things is like the broad strokes are they're they're thieves and they resell stuff and their mimes and they have a van that you could summon. Uh, <laughs> so this I is- am glad that we have we have finally achieved mimedom here today. Achievement unlocked. Mimes discovered. Yeah. <laughs> so the glass wall shattered. Xbox achievement noise. <laughs> so so these two mimes, one of them hands you, like, kind of tells you, like, no, we got this, and hands you a business card and, like, waves kind of dismissively as they turn their back to you and continue, uh, like, picking through stuff and, like, loading, <laughs> uh, looks like, uh, like TV or computer monitors into this van. You know, this would probably be a good candidate for feeding because they're mimes. Who are they going to tell? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, what are they going to do? <laughs> I see I see an opportunity to not only feed, but to infiltrate their organization. <laughs> Can we do both? <laughs> Why? He's Why? going to buy the business outright. 
I mean, we're here to either feed or find the uh, ritual circles, and we have a bunch of mimes here. <laughs> uh, Excavo, give me a perception plus uh, alertness roll, please. Oh, oh wow. my god, that's wow. the, probably the best roll of the day, I think. Uh, I think that's uh, nine successes since you're using a specialization. That's nine goddamn successes right Double there. The best I noticed roll of the, the campaign. <laughs> I am witnessing time itself. Okay. So, <laughs> wow. I only wanted to point out a, a one little thing to you, but uh, yeah, okay. you, you have observed everything that I could possibly tell you about these mines. Um <laughs> So the first thing is, you notice, all of them have, like, mimish clothes, very, like, form-fitting black, uh, like how stagehands are dressed. Like, all, all like, black clothes, uh, black sneakers, and uh, they have, like, uh, basically, like, their, their throat, you notice something that they all have in common with their throat. All of them have a scar right across the front of their throat. Um, oh. That looks identical and deliberate, uh, almost surgical. Like like the same surgical thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. happened to all of them, like right here in their throat. Also, um, you notice. I'm going to say uh, as you're kind of assessing the situation, uh, your auspex kicks in, your aura perception kicks in, and uh, you get a pretty ghoulish vibe from all three of them all of their auras are not as bright and vibrant as a normal mortal's aura is uh they're all kind of subdued and pale and faded uh like you have seen uh with the auras of some ghouls were Um, were we not able to detect this because of their white makeup uh, you don't automatically know when someone is a ghoul. There aren't automatically mm-hmm. any any signs that someone has drank vampire blood. There are some telltale things like if you drink vampire blood, you tend to like physically buff up a bit. In fact, any mortal who drinks vampire blood gets a point of uh, potence automatically. But so that aura change, am I positive they are ghouls? You with nine successes, you clock them. <laughs> Definitely, as being as far as you can tell, okay. they okay. are ghouls. <laughs> I am like confirmed. Okay. Outside of there being some other kind of creature that also reads as a ghoul, um, you are you have no reason to doubt that there are three ghouls who have drank vampiric blood in front of you. Turns out that mimes actually just give off that vibe. Okay, so I sidebar. <laughs> And I pull these three aside, sidebar, because unlike Augustine, I know that they can hear me. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I communicate this like, I think these are ghouls. I don't think we can feed on them. Dang. I think our princess is in another castle. We've got to find someone else. Can we feed on ghouls? 100%. They got can blood. Can we? I thought yeah. we... I thought it wasn't as good. Like, I mean, regular humans was, like, the best. Like it oh, work. no, ghouls are, it counts as, you're basically, you're drinking regular human blood when you're drinking a ghoul's blood. Oh, oh Like, good. you might okay. be able to taste that they're a ghoul, but it makes no nutritional difference. If you drank from a non-human animal, then the, like, nutrition value would be cut in half, but... That's oh, that's probably I what you're thinking. I thought of. ghouls were like, eh, diet human. <laughs> okay, okay, let's do it. Well, well, at the very least, I communicate that they, are, I believe, they are ghouls, and uh, they probably can't, even if they wanted to, say anything because of this scar. So, being informed that I can, that they can hear uh, now, <laughs> being informed, you know this now. <laughs> I, I walk I walk back to the trio, hat in hand, and uh, <laughs> by God, my my good men and man woman, uh, man woman, <laughs> am I am I in, indeed humbled I to, to find woman. that while your vocal 
faculties are not about us in our company this evening. Your uh, sonic inputs are. <laughs> I would like to more directly inform you that I would like to assist, I respect and admire this unique acquisitional endeavor and would like to uh, aid you in this operation, as it were. Behold! <laughs> and I grab Paddington and use him as like a makeshift um, cloth to put over an item. And I drape Paddington over what is very clearly a broken electronic. And I showmanshiply wiggle my wand out of my pants. And I tap the broken thing. And I pull Paddington off. And kind of Ta-da! I have found a host of items of such a caliber just around there. Might I borrow the uses of one of your fine and steady arm things to aid me in bringing oh such a God. wonderful device back to your bountiful harvest? Yeah, wait, what do I you mean by like arm combined. things? Arms. I mean arms. They probably think I'm a mime because my head is in my hands so hard. Graham, this might be a great time to plug your brilliant new um, web-based invention. Mm -hmm. Oh! The Augustan Translator. Oh! Yes. I don't think we've had. I don't think we've had an episode since you created it. No, the, we've not. The Bombasticator. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, the Bombasticator. I will uh, I will edit a little thing about the bombasticator into this video. Uh, for the the I think the, the mines just, need it right now. I think they need it. For the one hundred percent of anyone who might be watching us and doesn't know what we're talking about, I in in an earlier session we had a theory that you could recreate Augustine's speaking patterns by making a thing that takes normal human speech and then replaces every word with whatever the most obscure or longest synonym for that word would be. And then I actually, I put this together and it, it's pretty accurate. Devising a recurrence that takes formula human voice communication and and then replaces every spoken language with some the just about haze over or longest equivalent word for that speech communication would be. And and then I actually put this jointly, and it's jolly precise. So, here's how that plays out. Um, you, you pick up your bear cub and you put it over what would be a small uh, bear cub sized thing. Um, uh, let's say something like, it looks like a smashed, uh, like credit card reader that someone dropped off. Uh, and you, um, you hit it with the wand of repairing and you lift up the, the bear cub and the credit card reader is no longer smashed. And it, it looks as far as you can tell, like it would be operational at the same time you tap it. Uh, you hear like a weird cracking, shattering sound from maybe like 20 feet away in a pile of other electronics like something else <laughs> broke but nothing immediately critical to what the mimes are doing i rolled for that you got a 10 so <laughs> far away he's gonna do it once and like his ankle's gonna break <laughs> so you get like the body language vibe that the mimes were uh about to like they're kind of like hey cool yeah we're doing our thing you Thanks, here's our card. But when you fixed with a magic wand and a barica for some reason, a random thing, that makes them stop and start paying attention to you. So they, one of them, the, the woman walks up and, he, and she points to the, the wand that you're holding curiously and just kind of cocks her head to the side like, what? Um, I, invariably there is a pile of goods such as this, just around this here pile of refuse. Uh, and I gesture to a secluded area. I need but one of you to help me uh, bring forth such a bountiful harvest back to your illustrious van. And they just look at each other. 
and they they wordlessly communicate to you what <laughs> just what? one i need but one assistant for this next magical trick i will bring you more goods of this caliber i just need the assistance of one of your meticulously strong-armed fellows. The, uh... I don't get what the joke is with Darby's background. Get... Oh, god damn it. Okay. <laughs> so the the woman mime, the lady it mime, is Mrs. Friday. Mime, um, like, smiles at you and sort of, like like prances up and pulls uh, the same business card out of her pocket and hands it to you and uh, waves kind of dismissively and then turns around and just starts loading stuff into the van. They seem to either not understand or not care about you trying to lure one of them away. I return to the sidebar with uh, Excavo. My my initial plan is something of a disappointing, mediocre debt. I'm open to other ideas. Wait, Graham, can I ask a a table talk question? Can vampires feed on other vampires? Yeah, totally. Uh, it, it eventually results in a blood bond. If you do that three times yeah. over the course of three different nights, you become fully mm-hmm. blood bound to that vampire and you like really dig them and it's hard to do anything against them. But like yeah, mechanically, but like, yeah, you can you can get blood from other vampires. Like this whole time, we we could have just we don't need to find anybody. We could just do it to each other to test it. I right? mean, is it as good as like finding a, it? Just a human? occurred to me. It's better. Day. <laughs> oh no. Mm. Supernatural anyway, carry blood on. is but way better is than blood. But this is the test if we could feed out here. Yeah. Which okay, that would uh, test. Mm, yeah, yeah. That would have been a lot easier. Dang. That would test. But we now have a business card for these ghouls who can get us things, albeit maybe not fixed, but if they're just taking electronics, I can fix them. Was this based on the guy who would just bring you stuff? Th- that's that's what inspired this for Nukemak. There was a dude in Muncie who put his business cards in a bunch of different businesses and his whole thing was that he would bring you stuff. He would go to the <laughs> stores and he would buy the stuff for, or you'd, you'd pay for it and then he'd bring it to you. This was in like 2006, w- oh. way before any yeah, of these apps. Instacart. It was, yeah, it was an amazing insight in a revolution and we were blown away by this and i am pretty sure that's what inspired these mimes because they had the business cards and they would just run and they'd get you stuff and i think we speculated that this guy had to be stealing stuff to like break even because he would deliver anything for five dollars that was his fee how did i forget this do you remember what i'm talking about do i sound like a crazy person i don't but it sounds Convincing. I don't remember this. I, I think, think his name was like, it was like, his name started with a J. It was like Jared or something. And he would bring you stuff. I got to ask my college roommate it's a good about hustle. this. My other college roommate about this. Um, anyway, I'm pretty sure that was the inspiration for the mime, the mime <laughs> delivery people. Because <laughs> the man, the delivery guy never speaks. He just brings you stuff. Oh, he literally didn't even speak. He just... Yeah, and I think he would like bring you beer, and that's how we got in trouble. Oh, so the the first mime that came up and and greeted you, uh, one of the one of the dudes, um, walks up again, and uh, just like the the lady mime walks up to Augustine and and points at the the wand, and just makes kind of an interrogative gesture at you, like meh, meh, whoa, hmm. I hold up the wand, point at it, and then I, once again, point behind a uh, an industry pile. A large pile. And do you, like, fire it? Oh, no, no, I th- no. I think he's trying to suggest, like, if you go back here with me, I'll tell you what's up with this wand. Mm. Yeah. Very creepy vibe. Okay, so this mime uh, does, like, this to the other mimes. And I was like... And he starts walking in that direction with you. But he's like keeping his eye on you. 
Also, he's walking very mimishly, like <laughs> like his natural walk is a very clownish walk. So, I am per- I am both perplexed and impressed by the uh, the caliber of his stride, and I start emulating just to like practice. He, like, uh, I like his style. He switches to walking with like like there's like a like a a rope that he's pulling himself no. along with. Augustine, do you also do that? Um, yes, but I will one further, since I am trying to lead him behind this thing, I am pulling on the same rope, uh, just in front of him, and looking back to make sure he's still okay and attached to the rope. Um. You see that he's, he's honestly really good at it. He's not just a jackass dressed as a mime and doing mime things. Like, he must be trained or something, because, like, his his feet are doing this weird moonwalky thing where it, it doesn't look like he's even walking normally. Like, it, it he's pulling it off. Like, it looks like he's really pulling himself and, like, scraping his feet along the ground. And after a few moments, he switches to, like, looking like he's he's riding a bicycle, but he's he's walking. And again, it's like pretty impressive. It's like uh, like a little startling when you see it at first. He's not like dead ass hovering as though a bike's there, is he? He's he's still walking by all metrics. He's not like doing anything supernatural. You know, it's uh, he's going over to you. It's you know slick enough. Mime that... is one of the supernatural arts. It's what he's doing is slick enough that you would you would actually need to roll to feel absolutely certain about the answer to that question. So please give me a perception plus investigation roll. That is uh, six dice for you. Ten. Uh, That's well, just there's one. one. Uh, Let's get the other five. Five more. They're all ones. <laughs> <laughs> Megabotch, I am now mute. Oh, damn, yeah. A lot of successes. <clears throat> Got it. At first, you aren't sure if if the if something supernatural is happening. Like if it's like you've seen magicians, you know that stage magic is a thing, uh, and you've seen real magic, and you know that like sometimes you know they look similar. Obviously, uh, you. Y- feel like you understand how like mime works it's it's all just like uh the the mime is in fact doing things that don't make physical sense uh you you feel pretty certain that the mime is actually casually doing some sort of supernatural mime craft (laughs) (laughs) um okay just are we behind the pile? Are we generally outside of view, even uh, outside of anyone else's view? It's uh, just me and him. Yeah, like uh, I'm not sure if you were trying to be out of view of Archibald and Excavo, but you are out of view of the other two mimes. Okay, uh, is it safe to say he's casually like standing on some sort of foliage, some grass, some weeds, or something? Not in the middle of the recycling center, no. Like here and there, there's maybe like a little bit of like a weed growing up out of the cracks in the concrete, but uh, there's there are no substantial plants anywhere nearby. Okay. Um, do do do. So there were a couple things I wanted to try and accomplish simultaneously. I don't know, um, how like it's, it's a minor table talk. Some insights on how you think this could be accomplished, or if it could be accomplished. Um, I would like to casually, like again, performatively, like a, the same way I pulled out the wand, but you know, not indicating what I'm pulling out of my pockets. Uh, I'm gonna pull out seeds. And kind of like, stake man, showmanshiply drop them over my elbow onto the floor by his feet. And still kind of performatively, um, speed of seasons passing, and try and get plants to grapple his feet in place. Oh man. So you have to touch the seeds to get them to grow. And that would take like a turn. 
and then it would be a separate role to get them to uh, to actually grapple, which you don't need physical contact for. And uh, there's not a lot for them to root themselves to. You're basically okay. like, standing on concrete. Okay. Um, if In which case, this sounds unlikely. So the other question I have is, how quickly can I burn blood to heal my wounds? You can burn three blood a turn. So uh, just in one turn, you can heal all of your wounds. And in that one turn, would he... You know what? I can't predict the future. Hope is not a strategy. I'm just going to give, give it the old college try. It's not obvious I'm... that you're burning blood to heal your wounds, if that's what you mean. Yeah, you just I'm like gonna... take a second and you concentrate, but it's not all that overt. <gasps> I'm going to burn blood, burn blood to heal my wounds. And uh, provided that doesn't spook him, um, I'm just going to go ahead and feed him. Feed on or him? Or feed on him. Feed him. <laughs> I, I heal my wounds, there you slit go, my buddy. wrist, and then squirt blood at him until he is fed. <laughs> That's a weird... Your take on it? Well, I am happy to remove this this wound penalty uh, post-it note that's been on Burn it. your your character card for a very long time. Um, Yay! <laughs> he did it. Uh, he did it. Pack it in. He did it. All right. So please give me. Uh, I think you're. Yeah, you're trying to like pounce on the guy. And bite him. Uh, please give me a dexterity plus brawl roll. That'll be five dice for you. Woo! Two successes. And let me just roll real quick for this homeboy. Um, I I love hate that face you just made. <laughs> so you you run up. And you lunge at the guy. And a very strange thing happens. You see his his big juicy neck full of mortal blood ready to to extract forcefully. And uh, I phrase that weird. Um, You feel your face bonk against a surface like there were a pane of glass between the two of you. And you see the mime dude with his hands up like this. And you've just bonked off of the wall that he is miming exists between the two of you. And he he, he does this. He's like, oh, ah, ah, and then turns around and starts uh, kind of jogging back to his mime buddies. Comrades, uh, I definitely call over to uh, my teammates, purportedly, and gesture at the now jogging man while uh, pressing my hands against what either is or used to be the mime wall to indicate, like, that I can't get him. Well, I'm also saying I am unable to. Pr- uh, oh no, you you are free to, you're free to move around. Uh, you just <laughs> were deflected. Yeah, we don't know what this means. <laughs> so as you do that, as you start running back to and getting the attention of uh, your allies, um, another very strange thing happens. Two helicopters uh, very quickly swoop in from overhead. Wow. The pilot of one of them <laughs> sees what appears to be a van of ne'er-do-wells stealing stuff that should rightfully be recycled. And I suggest that might be, because we're just about, mm-hmm. we're a little over the two hour mark. Uh, that could be where we leave this. Ah, that session. is a, a brilliant That is beautiful. Yeah. I believe it was uh, Steven Stallone who starred in the movie Cliffhanger in 1994. So uh, next session, we're going to pick up with the mimes suddenly dealing with uh, 
Augustine uh, uh, apparently attacking them and uh, two helicopters swooping in and Darby coming to whatever conclusions he will about these mimes that he has spotted who are acting very openly and obviously out in the middle of this uh, recycling center while Archibald, Augustine, and Excavo are kind of uh, skulking around in the shadows. <laughs> um, uh, let's get to experience point spending. Augustine, are you still hanging on to your points? You have 13. I would like to take a dot in performance. I, I think I, I performed my pants off. I think to get away with that, you have to give me a sense of like what kind of performance are you now skilled in? Oh, that's Mime, fair. That's of fair. course. Yeah. Mime? Uh, I was directly trying to emulate the mimery. Um, unfortunately, you know, there's not a, a skill dot for showmanship because, boy, howdy, did I give them a show. I should have charged them for that. Every I mean, time you speak, you have showmanship. <laughs> I would accept that Augustine is the kind of person to have some sort of like old hobby or passion like the art of Bonneville. pantomime <laughs> that got awakened by uh, spending some time in the fellowship of a fellow mime enthusiast. So uh, if you <laughs> There's want... There's also expression mime, which I feel like you could go either way. I feel like expression is like spoken, verbal, written, that kind of thing. You, you, I mean... What do you think mime is other than physical communication? Well, I think that's the difference between <laughs> expression and performance. Isn't it like the intention? Like performance is a... Mime, however, would be performance, I think. We can, yeah, we can go I'll to the, the book and see what it, it says the difference is. Cause it's, it's I, I'm unwilling to litigate that. Uh, the, the, the prosecution rests. I'll, I'll take performance. The book describes expression as uh, the ability to get your point across clearly, which yeah, could be that right. could be with mime uh, through conversation, poetry, or even in written form. Um, so I think you would use expression to communicate. And I guess there is an argument that like wordlessly expressing yourself if that's what you want to be good at, you could have a dot in like tacit expression. Uh, but I think performance is like to impress or distract or confuse or like art. Like it's performance if what you're doing is artistic. It's expression if what you're doing is communication. So I, I, think, I, I think I'd let you do either of those. I think performance makes more sense just because that's how I was trying to use it. Uh, to bamboozle, to confuse, to distract. Um, the the non-threatening nature of performance was used to try and captivate them. So I, yeah, I think performance. I think to be a, tr a truly great mime, you'd need both. This is true, and I am not yet a great mime. Great that minds is, think alike. My, my own personal arc by the end of this campaign... I will Thank be an you. incredible mime. <laughs> Started verbal, ends entirely at nonverbal. A beautiful mime. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, Darby, you have 16 points. You've said before that you want to save up 20 for a sixth dot of strength. Is that still the I'm case? Still on that plan. Two more sessions, baby. Almost there. And Excavo has seven points that she could spend. I, uh... I think I've earned my first point in drive. I hotwired a car. I'll be goddamn. It's true. That's three points. I'll, is that three? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Drive does yeah. not help with helicopters, in case you were wondering. I <laughs> I don't have any plans to fly a helicopter, but I will keep that in mind. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah, a little bit of drive in me. Right. All right. So you're hanging on to four experience points. And uh, any feedback about this session or about the plans for the upcoming session? No, I like that we're starting to hand wave some of the transport time. And I think that's smart, like moving forward. Yeah. Anything that's boring and predictable, 
yeah, skip well, it. Well, especially now that there aren't obstacles every time we're on the road. Like, we have methodologies of getting from place to place without worry. And I think that just makes it more dense with action and cool stuff. And I like that we split the party. I know it's risky and bad, but I think it allows us to get up to some hijinks and, and put different <laughs> combinations of people together, which is interesting. Like the that situation with the mimes would have been so different if Darby was there. And I, I think it's like <laughs> it's fascinating how the rest of the team reacts and acts without him. So I think it's just dramatically interesting. Oh, and just so it's explicitly said, um, I I think that the the Nukers gave a stack of MKT access cards to Archibald. I presume Archibald distributed those to everyone on the team, so everyone can, he would that socialist yeah yeah so Everybody everyone can one. independently use the MKT at yeah. will instead of just like, assuming they have car keys. Uh, or, or or the the, the will to hotwire the, 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 our own car. Actually, a, a vehicle isn't necessary. It. You could just be a pedestrian. And oh, interesting. Walk into it. Not what it was designed for, but still. Cool. Well, good session. Lots of fun. Looking forward to the next one. Likewise. See you soon. Love All you guys. Right. Have a good night. Peace.